again. And here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Okay. So, let's give a little time here for people to get caught up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to... Actually, I can't see the chat. It's not coming through on me, of course. Why would it? There it comes. There it comes. Hello. So, I'm assuming everyone can hear me fine and see me fine. Okay. Uh, so, welcome to that. Uh, Marco, to your question, no. There's no way to change that. It's going to be five degrees. So, for those that are joining us in this stream for the first time, um, what we're doing here is we are teaming up with Scott uh, at Miniac. And he is a prolific, a fantastic painter of miniatures. Okay, so he does a lot of painting of some miniatures. And what I'm going to be doing in this stream is I'm going to be making a miniature. And our theme is a, a banshee. A woman vampire. Uh, and I want to put some armor on her. We're going to do a bunch of different things with her. Because then it will help me spread across multiple techniques for you guys. Thank you for letting me know my voice and audio and everything's working fine. Okay, in fact, here, let me move my, my microphone even closer. Just to... There. We'll get it more in there. Okay, so... What's going on again? So again, so... We're doing a theme here, a banshee. Um, she's gonna have some armature. We're gonna probably bring in some cloth at some point as well, so that um, we can implement some of that. In essence, I'm trying to go across maybe multiple features here for us, so you guys can take away as much as you can out of the stream. So I'll be building her from beginning, so obviously this is part two, to the very end, to the point where I'm gonna prep it for print, and I'm going to 3D print it on a Form 2 printer. Um, I'll even cover some of that, how I prep it for printing. I'll show you guys the prints on camera. Um, so you guys can see that whole pipeline. And then I'm going to toss it over to Scott at Miniac. And then he's going to do a video of hand painting her and the process you would go for that. So this is a great way for you guys to completely see a project from the all the way to the very end. And then the beauty of this, it's going from myself one artist to another artist because that's a true pipeline uh in many cases you're not going to be lucky enough to you're the artist doing everything necessarily uh there's going to be times that you are doing more than that okay all right so as always um you know how we like to roll for those we know we love our tangent alerts right we love our inception tangents right so if you have questions you know, I'm here for you, the users, okay? So that's what I'm here for, okay? Let me know. Um, and someone's saying it's lagging. So on Twitch, uh, I don't know if YouTube and Facebook, those are watching there, is it lagging on your side? Uh, I haven't moved her at all, so now I'm moving her. So it might be just multiple connection, a multi, maybe even on your side. I'm not sure. But everyone, if everyone is, is good to go, then we'll go. All right. So I want to keep creating some some armature for her or, you know, like, you know, like this kind of stuff. Medieval knight type of feel. But she's cool, man. Okay. She's a banshee. We got to make some cool stuff in here. So, again, uh, techniques um, about the way to go about doing this. So I'm going to show a couple more today as we're building up more, more of her armature. Okay, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this, this part right here. Okay, so I don't want it to come like this. I want it silhouette wise. And again, I'm, I, I live by this little, this little thing over here, right? Um, the silhouette that I'm building right here, it's coming sh straight down. I, I'm not a massive fan of that. So I want to change that up. Okay. So here you go. So for me, one of the faster ways to do this, honestly, would be using um, the deformers. Okay? So I'm going to plop on my gizmo by hitting the W key. W, W. And then I'm going to click on that little gear. And I'm actually going to use the bend curve just because I also want to use something different. Okay. Just the more of a different tools I show you guys, the more you guys will get ideas. Okay. So what I have here is now a box 
okay, that is around the bounding box of the mesh. You notice that bounding box isn't going all the way down to this one. If you guys remember, this is actually an array mesh. So this is kind of why I want to show this. Even though this is a array mesh, I'm still having the ability to make some quick adjustments here. So I'm using the bend curve. So the first thing is along what axis do I want here? So that's what this green cone is. It's actually your axis point. So right now it's sitting along the Y. So if I click on this, it goes to red. Now it's on the X. So in essence, I can go to the blue and now it's along the Z, right? So this one right here is just saying what axis point do you want to bend along? So I want the Y because I want that direction, okay? And then your orange cone is the resolution, right, of the points. How many points do you want? along here right that's all it is and for this three is more than enough okay that's really it i don't really need to do anything else this is a smoothing cone that allow for some smoothing this is do i want symmetry which on i don't want symmetry okay so it means is i'm going to click on this one dot i don't want that dot to move at the same time if i wanted to do that then i would do this so that when this dot is pressed this dot also moves okay so i'm turning symmetry off Okay, and then this cone is your a smoothness slider as well. So I'm just gonna go to profile and you guys can see, I'm just gonna grab this dot and then that's what I'm looking for. Something more, more like around that range. And I'm looking over here um, because, and then see, I can pull this chest plate out a little bit. See, now I'm getting a curve like that. So this is what I'm looking for, something a little bit more like that in my boat. That's, that's what I want, something there. Okay, so the stream has stopped for somebody. Okay, is it still super laggy on unvisual? So let me know, okay? So then this for me, okay, it's great. I'm gonna accept that. And then let's say I wanna even put it again and now maybe I wanna go along the X, right? And then this is maybe where I want to be symmetrical. So then as I pull out that side, see, it's pulling on both. So both are getting moved right now, right? And you got to remember, I'm, I'm taking advantage now. I've got two of these, right? And if I go, oh, what's three look like or four or five? See, I can repeat more and maybe this is what I like. So I'm again, I'm just a fan of this. Right, of being able to see, mm, do I want three? Do I want an insane amount or do I want just two? So for now, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the two, okay? So that's where I'm going. Okay, so John, you said you switched to 1080 and that you're fine now. Yeah, I'm broadcasting out at 1080, so, but um, 720 might be better or vice versa. You guys might need to drop down your resolution too. Hey, Yatkin from Istanbul. Wow. There we go. Okay. Uh, what does B Radius do on the clip brush? Ho, ho, ho! People, we got our first one of the day. We got our first. I got to show this. There we go. It's tangent time. Right? So this is going to be really quick for you. Okay. So I'm just going to grab this sphere, right? So the question was, I got a clip curve, which allows me to just clip things. Right, so this is in essence just pushing the geometry to meet that curve, right? And this person was asking, okay, well, when I do this, and if I turn on B radius here, which I'm bringing up this menu by the holding down the control on the space bar, the B radius stands for brush radius. So now it's only gonna clip based upon your brush radius right now. Okay, so if I go a little bit like here and now I clip, you'll see the whole thing doesn't clip now. So this spherical part stays spherical, and the only part that clips is looking at brush radius. That's it, that's all the B radius does, okay? Um, but you guys gotta remember, this B radius is a global setting for the clip, the slices, and the trims, and they all will do something different, right? The slice, I love it with the slice, because then this allow me to get actually more than one slice at a time. So it's now, see, tools do slice, dual dual slices right and if i turn off the line you'll see the width of the slicing is the brush size okay so that's what that does <clears throat> so as an artist i have all day now to slice away on this with two slices staying parallel with each other 
based upon the brush size. It's not the big circle to your brush size. That's your focal shift. The middle circle to your brush size. That's that's your brush size. Okay. And so now as an artist, I can do stuff like this where I'm making now just slight. And I know this width and this width is the same and this width is the same. So this allows me to thinking outside the box of ZBrush. There's many ways now I can go about this. Even to the point where I could do something like this. And let's go a little bit more. Right? And I'm now, boom, I've got perfect scribe lining. Right? So I'm using the slice with B radius to get me to this point. I like to describe stuff inside of ZBrush as like playing chess. I had to know to use slice with B radius first before I did an edge looping pushing in. Right? <clears throat> so there you go. Okay? So there you have it. So now, the other question you had about on the unclipping, okay, this unclipping. So when you guys use a clip brush, let's just use a clip curve. I'm going to turn off B radius and I clip. This is the benefit of, okay, I got a flat surface. There's going to be times of ways, depending on the brushes you use, say like this, the way a surface is being evaluated is important. Right, this interaction that's going to happen here. Let me turn off my sampling here. Doing this star, right? The that star being applied on a flat surface is very different than the star being applied on a rounded surface, right? Because it's being applied on a rounded surface. We got you. Just got to keep evaluating that curvature. This is not doing that. So what you can do is flatten something, right? Draw something out or sculpt on it, and then you can unclip, and it'll give you back the original shape but maintain the actual sculpting that you've done. Right, but it only, when well, I only store one clip at a time, you can't do like four or five clips and then do sculpting and then go backwards with multiple unclipping. It's only one clip at a time, okay? There you go. There's our tangents. There's one of our tangents, okay. So let's continue working on her and working on some armature. Let's look at some different ways to go about this. Okay, so again, I'm going to, I'm going to select just her. All right, and let's make, I'm going to make a shoulder piece in here, I think. I'm going to have something that comes down in here. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm just going to turn everything off but her, okay? So in my subtool list, you can see, remember, I started making folders, right? So I have all this, I don't need the teeth or the eyes right now. Okay, so I can turn everything on and off by holding the shift key and then just clicking on the eyeballs, right? So to turn everything on and off. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'll turn the eyeball on just for her again, just, okay, so we got it on. And again, like we were doing in last stream, okay? Let me put this focal back to zero and let's put this brush back to the default at least. Okay, so masking pen wise, again, we were doing stuff, I was doing stuff like this, which I like because I, you know, I'm figuring out how far down do I want this padding to come for her on her arm. You know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring it down. I think it's gonna be nice to bring it down a little bit here. I wanted to go down her arm quite a bit here, okay? And then I'm gonna slowly just unmask parts. That's really not as important to me anymore. So I enjoy working like this for when I'm kind of figuring things out. Because I can do that. It's a 3D model, right? So I can really look at every angle before something's even created to really see is that what is that what I want? Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna give it some, her some more room. In fact, let's do this. Let's even go to the masking circle and let's get a nice rounded unmask around that top there right something more mm, yeah actually I'm not liking that I'm not liking it I changed my mind let me go back to my pen creation process welcome to it maybe something like that there yeah 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 and then you know what I think I'm gonna round out the bottom here I think is what I'm going to do okay so I'm starting to get something that I want so now if I turn everything back on I can now see get a gauge of really how is this going to work for her, right? So, I move the mask circle by the space bar, okay? So if you guys do this, when you mask out, you can hold the space bar and you can move it around. That's it, that's all I'm doing is holding the space bar. 
Okay, so now looking at this, all right, uh, I'm all right with what's happening here. It might be a little too low. I think I'm going to come up just a little bit. Something more in there. Like if she's in a battle with swords, I want that to be protected, right? So that's, that's in essence, that's the point of armor. It's the, you know, they can protect themselves. Okay, I don't think this is coming up high enough. Right now that I have these on, it's not coming up high enough. So I'm going to now turn on transparency so I can see, you know what? I want this to at least start matching the under that at least into there. And let's make this, I need this coming up actually higher into her shoulder to get this design to what I want. And again, this is kind of why I like to work this way. This is just something I can visually really fast right look at what i'm creating and of course if we weren't all in this stream together right uh, i'd be going a lot faster i wouldn't be walking through things and talking about things as much so now i'm gonna turn on my transparency and go okay okay from that i'm i'm good with that and remember we're creating a miniature that needs 3d printed scott's got to paint this so there's some just like this is no bueno right here what i have already going on here we're gonna need to fix this right here I'm going to need that fixed for sure. Okay. So I'm going to say, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, that's an official yes, people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like Clark Griswold. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 80s reference. Name the movie, people. Go for it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so here we go. So we were doing previously... I just did some extracts, right? That's the old school way, definitely, of doing things. It's never never wrong. The extract button, always a friendly thing for us. Now, the thing with extract, you got to remember, it's going to be a little dense, okay? So, I don't want that. In this case, I want to stay low polygon with this, okay? That's my goal here, is to stay low polygon, okay? And the turn your transparency off is over here. Right here, there's a button right here to turn your transparency on and off. And then there's two types of transparency. There's a ghost trans. So if I turn everything back on, okay, there's ghost transparency, which all the sub tools. Yes, Ben. Yes. Yes. Okay. National Lampoons. Which one, though? Which one? Does he go? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's National Lampoons. Clark Griswold will give it away, but can you name it? Can you name the National Lampoon movie? Okay, so then ghost, and then there's a non-ghost. There you go. Okay, uh, Santiago, since you asked, okay? All right, so back to this. I want to actually stay low polygon, so I'm going to show you guys another way to go about this. And again, <laughs> thanks, Ben. Thanks for aging me real quick. Thanks. Okay, so I want to stay low polygon. So instead of doing an extract or doing a panel looping, I'm going to use the topology brush this time because um, I find it useful to just quickly say, okay, I want a line there. You know what? In fact, I'm going to put a line there as well. And then this is going to allow me, I'm going to look from the top. I'm going to make my curve right along there. And so now whenever there is a connection between lines, this is how you want to use this brush. There's a green circle that will show up. In essence, that's a vertex point. And what also is important, this part where it's yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa, Lisa needs braces moment. Okay. What's controlling that is this brush size. So if I go really big, you can see I get more spans. Okay. And if I go smaller, I'll get I'm uh, the opposite. I'll get less spans when I'm bigger. Sorry. <laughs> and more spans of yellow black when the brush size is smaller. This is important to you guys, is when you're using this brush, when it goes across, it doesn't make a quad or a triangle until there's four or three intersecting lines. So obviously, if you're going really big brush size, you're doing this, you can see how big they are. If I was trying to get really refined and see I go through the two black areas, you see when I let go, they actually move to the closest intersecting point, okay? So I usually, when I'm doing this, I'll usually stay at a relatively, you know, depending on the size of the model, a relatively smaller brush size, usually in the 20s, is usually a safe bet for me, okay? And then now I have this, 
Okay, and then now I say, all right, I want it to now to come through here. We're gonna fall along, it's gonna curve. And then this is why I also like this, I can stop and then continue on and bring it right up. And now you can see there's a quad being made across here. Okay, and that quad is because there's now four green circles. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up by holding the Alt key clicking and dragging anywhere and we'll delete all the parts of the lines that aren't making anything okay there um so ruben uh wait so you're asking or you're asking let me see you're asking if it's possible or are you making a feature request yeah that's not possible what you want ruben that's that would be something that needs to be added Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so this is this is the stuff you guys got to pay attention. I see Ruben. I uh, see someone's talking about also using this renders FX. These are the key points I'm making you to make it better. Okay. So John's bringing up another way to work too. So now what I need to do is create now more supporting spans across. Right, and the minute I do this, I've now just made an n-gon, right? So in essence, this is no longer quadded, right? So the best thing for me to do would be, I would go across from this point to that point, right? So there's actual geometry there now, so that when I start building this across, you're getting the supported topology now going across. And then obviously for this, I need to come down and make this and then make that, right? And then this is creating quads. And then I just look at different views and say, okay, there's not enough. There's, I need one more span through here just to round out a little bit, okay? And then down here, see there's triangles being made. So you see there's orange and then there's red. So if I wanna turn this into the quad, obviously I just build off from this, okay? I build off and make an extra point there. And then now if I tap on the surface, I get my shoulder pads, okay? And then that thickness is now being controlled by the draw size. So I don't worry about the thickness until I'm pretty much at the end for the most part. And then I can up the thickness to what I want, tap on the surface, and now I have shoulder pads, okay? And then the benefit here is they're very low polygon, right? So it's gonna open up things for me down the line that we're going to get into next here okay you cannot move the points once they're drawn out no nope but i'm going to show another method for you guys here that's staying with the theme of low polygon and building like this okay so the first stream i showed you guys more using a little bit more dense message meshes with like an extract right we can use panel looping there's things like that now i'm showing you in this stream how you can build this stuff up with just low polygon right out the gate okay <clears throat> so i can say yeah this is pretty much what i want right looking good now the thing to keep in mind everybody too what you are also able to to do is if the draw size is all the way down to one when you guys tap on the surface okay so if you guys tap on that surface it's going to create a single plane so in essence there's there's no thickness there Okay, so it's just one plane and that there's benefits to this for sure, right? So there's ways to do this, okay? So in fact, let's stick with single, just a plane in essence so you can see why I might want to do this. I'm going to come down here into my splits and I can either use split mass points, split on mass points. I could do any one of these. The smarter one is obviously I want, I have a right and left shoulder in here, right? So there's, a left shoulder and a right one. I want those shoulder pads to stay as one subtool. So I would not use split items, the parts, right? So I would not use that. To get started, just tell me what you need. And then she went, went off on her own. Okay, so this would mean if I click that button, each shoulder pad would become its own subtool. That's not what I want. So the three that would make sense would be split the parts, Unmasked or mass, it, 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 whatever one you, is you prefer. So now you have this and see it's thin, 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 right? 
and going back to her, right? If I go back and then I go with a little bit of thickness and then I tap, oh, that's some broad shoulders. And then now I'm gonna say this one, I'm gonna use split to parts, similar parts, okay? And now you can see I get those and then I've got all these pieces splitting off the similar parts, right? So I don't need two of her. So I'm gonna delete the one. Okay, right? So now I have this, right? So there is different ways to go about this, right? So this was pretty thick, right? So I'm gonna turn everything on and I'm gonna relook at this and go, okay, it's not bad, okay? And we're looking at with her now, it's low polygon. So I'm gonna turn on my dynamic subdivs by hitting the D D D dynamite okay and hey yeah so now i can look at this in a smooth form okay so now that i have this okay wait i'm just reading a question uh, it switches between the screen space size and the actual size of the brush okay someone's answering something okay okay so now that i have this Right? We're low, 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 low polygon, right? So let me turn the lines on. So I don't like where this is sitting in space. I don't like how thick this is. So I'm going to change this up on the fly. So I'm going to switch to Z Modeler, which is my brush. Uh, I'm going to hover over face, space bar it, Q mesh. I'm going to say polygroup all. Okay? And then I'm going to say, all right, and then let's just do that. Because I want probably something more like that. Like, it needs to hover a little bit on her, right? And just give it a little bit more type of volume there for her, right? And again, these now, these need to start coming off her shoulder more, right? There's Everything's now sitting too close to her body. So I'm gonna start adjusting that stuff too. Okay, but what this is now giving me is because I've got low polygon and I've got something now like Z Modeler, I can tell ZBrush, you know what I also wanna do so I just changed the size by Q mesh polygroup all, right? And instead of adding right to it like this, I'm just holding the shift key now. And then that's in essence switching to move. So I'm moving that, right? And you know what? I'm going to even do this now. I'm going to pull that out to do something like that. Okay. And now you can see what we start to get here, right? So we're starting to get a little ridge there which definitely that's what I'm going to want in her for character. And in fact, I'm going to switch to poly loop and pull up on this. And now we get something like that, right? Okay. And now I want to, I want to manipulate this a little bit more. Okay. I want to play with this. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to now start saying, all righty then. Oh, righty then. I'm going to hover over an edge, crease, and I'm going to do partial. And I say, I want that creased and that creased. Okay, so you see what happens here? See how the partial even went through the whole thing? It's giving me that. Like, I like what's happening there, right? And I want that there. So I like, I want that little sharpness up, but I don't want it going through all the way like that. Okay? So what you guys might be able to, which is new, okay, is looking at this. See the point right there? I'm gonna switch to crease here and do and do shortest path. And so now I can say, click that point and come over here and I want it to crease to that point. So there, that corner is now creased and then that's what I want, right? So then I would do the same thing over here, boom, right? And you see it's going all the way around. See, it just kept continuing. That's not what I want. So I'm going to tap the space bar to let ZBrush know I want to restart. I don't want to just keep continuing that crease that I was making because I don't want any of that crease right there. I don't want these three edges creased. I just want from that point to that point creased. And then now I've got something like that, right? Because remember, we're making a kick butt banshee woman, right? And I want to have some sharpness in there, right? Just to give her, give her some intimidation, okay? There you go, right? Uh, Ruben, are you asking about 3D printing? So you basically need an object with thickness to print con correctly? Yeah, you can't print a thin plane. It's not gonna happen, okay? 
What key combination am I hitting to alter the polygroups? I'm tapping the Alt key. So as I'm moving them, my pen is not coming off the Cintiq, and I'm just I keep tapping the Alt key until I get a color that I like. Okay. All right, we're gonna. I'm continuing this process though. All right, I like where I'm going with this. Okay, and you know I should start thinking about 3D printing here, right? I should really think about the fact that I'm gonna be printing this off for this, but. I'm going to keep it low because I also am not looking at the, um, excuse me, I'm not looking at the posed version because she's going to get posed. I'm going to pose her too, right? So I'm going to need to make adjustments on the pose anyway. So I'm going to keep it kind of floating right now because there's also, I'm going to be able to draft in here if I want to when I 3D print as well. So what I don't like about this right now is it's too perfect. And this is something that's important to me. This is a combination of Lisa needs braces and it's a combination. This is so important. This should never, ever, 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 ever be sent forward in your work. Okay? It is way too perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Nothing engineers like this and looks like this in real life. Again, like we talked last week, look around in the room you're in right now. There is nothing that has a 100% perfect 90 degree angle in anything in your room right now. It's, it's, it's not. Because there's molding and casting. There's... Even, you know, 3D printing has still its limitations too, right? It might look something very perfect, but if you start looking up close, you'll see slight little bevels. So I obviously want to put that in my work. So right now I've turned on dynamic subdiv, right? Which I'm using shift D to turn it off and the D key to turn it on. So right here, I'm going to say by default, it says two smooths. I'm going to move it to four. So it looks a lot cleaner. Okay. So right there, that's nice. It's looking a lot better. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and tap on the word crease. That way the dynamic subdiv menu stays open with the crease. That's why I held on the shift key. That's the only reason why I'm holding on to it. And then right here is my one of my favorite ways of changing up surface. So the crease level right here. This is telling ZBrush how long to hold the creasing on the, the, the surface, right? So I'm going to say, all right then. This is fine, but... I don't want to hold it for 15 subdivision levels, okay? I'm going to hold it for less. So I'm going to walk down and put it at 2, and you can see now this is starting to get more realistic. So if you see if I zoom in, everything got soft a little bit, right? Because now these creases aren't allowed to stay perfect the entire time that we're subdividing, okay? So this is important for me okay so now that i have that ability i can even make it go down to one right and it'll soften up even more or i can go up to three and it'll get back to being a lot more sharper and then of course if i go to two four now it's back to being ridiculously sharp and that's because i'm saying four levels hold the creasing and right now on my smooth subdiv right here right i'm only looking at four subdivision levels so that's why it's staying really sharp, okay? There you go. So if I move this up to five, you'll see it smooth a little bit, but not enough. So this my go-to is kind of putting this slider at four and this slider at two to start. And then I just play, do I want to put a little bit more smoothness in there? Like, do I want to hold, do I want to hold these corners a little bit more right here? Like, that, again, that's a, that's a preference of me as the artist, right? So then maybe I'll look at that and go, uh, all right, I don't know. I don't know which, I'm going to go with, it's either two or three. I'm going to think I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with right now three, just to carry through what I have here. And I think I'm going to see what does it look like if we actually round up the top half? Do I like that a little bit better? I think I, I think I might like that a little bit more, right? So there we go. And then the beauty of this, because we're low, 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 low polygon, if I want to make this this ridging that happen thicker because I'm low polygon, easy thing. I got Q mesh poly loop. Again, click, hold the shift key, and I can actually add a little bit more of that to the shoulder pad. Right? And then now this 
this piece now, I would probably say we need to move this up a little bit higher. And now we need to start stretching it out a little bit more. Whoops. Because it needs to fit, right, within what I'm making, right? So, in essence, these are connecting into this. Right, I'm doing stuff like this because I'm planning on doing some nice sculptural details on these parts and this part of her armor. Right? So, again, I probably wouldn't do any of this ridging stuff, like what I'm just doing here right now, until probably near close to the end. Because I'd want that happening also on this, happening on this. So I'd want to stay consistent probably. Right? So we'll go backwards and just wanted to give you guys this idea here. Let's go back to this, right? And then now I only need, I'm only going to crease that edge, that edge. And I wanted that and that. And then I'll look at that. And then again, I wanted this sitting at three, right? And I wanted that at four, okay? So there, I'm, that's good enough for me. I'm going to move on, okay? Because again, I'm making all the pieces right now. And then I'm going to position them, and then I'm going to start getting into the detailing of this. So right now, I'm just like, do I like what I see here? Okay? And then now, because I'm also low polygon, I can easily adjust things and even play with the silhouette of this a little bit. If I want to do something more like that, and then I'm going to make this come off her, her a little bit, her arm a little bit down here. And again, I'm setting myself up for... I got to think of 3D printing, okay? And there's going to be ways I'm going to I'm going to manipulate and play with that. So I like that cuz again, I'm also people, I am constantly looking at this up here. I'm going to make this bigger and let's move this one over here now just so I can see it. Okay? I'm constantly, you guys probably don't see, but my eye is moving up to there and I'm looking at that. Right? I'm always looking at that. Hey, there you go. And, you know, let's delete. We don't need... I've got two neck pieces in here. So we don't need this one. I'm going to delete that one. So we're down to this. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Okay, let's move down to her legs now. And let me show you guys another way to go about doing maybe a low polygonal way of working. Okay? And being able to go fast as much as you can. What's going on, Peter? How are you? Uh, <clears throat> hold on, I'm just catching up on a question while I take a drink. If I have a photo scan geometry, can I project into low mesh? Well, yes, but you can't project the detailing from a scan into a low, low, low polygon. You can't do that. It doesn't, you can't do that. You gotta, you'd have to divide up the low polygon version to have enough information to get the projection of the scan. To answer your question, panels. The lips are bothering because of the buck teeth, right? We're going to completely change her face, so don't even worry about her face. I'm just using this right now as a base for me to have a base, but I'm going to completely be changing her face big time, right? It's There's going to be a lot of change in her. We're still in, I'm making armature. Okay, so let's come down to the legs, right? So what I want to do now is use Z Modeler. To build something okay <clears throat> so and think about combina combination of things here so i'm gonna say let's go and insert so i'm gonna grab this imm primitives h so you can see there's the little uh icon above the brush palette so right up in here when i'm in the brush palette right i for i am i'm doing this you see there's one that says imm primitive h and there's one that says imm primitives this is important okay so I want the one with H. And the reason why I want the one with H is there's a, at the very end of this, there are multiple pieces of just geometrical shapes in here. But at the end of this one, there's a single plane. In essence, one polygon. Right? That's all that's there is just one polygon. Okay? And what I want to do now is start playing with this. Right? And... Looking at some of my references, I'm going to start going now a little bit more here. I want to start doing something a little bit like what's on this this vampire guy, right? Where he's got uh, armor here covering pretty much the front of the legs. And it's going a little bit around the hip, right? 
most likely there's there could be armor in the back which we could put um, but they're not going to just be continuous because then it's going to be hard to move your leg, right? So if you look at medieval armor, they'd make a panel here and then maybe another panel here and then they would connect with leather, right? So that the knight could move. So I'm going in front view. I'm going to make a panel here that I want to have happening with her, okay? So again, we could have gone the topology brush, but this time I'm going to say, let's just, let's just draw out a plane, okay? And in fact, I don't need it symmetrical right now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this and I want it to be straight so I'm gonna use my gizmo hold the shift key and then you can see that plane is perfectly straight in every angle here right <clears throat> all right so what I want to do now is I've drawn this out on something and in this case I've drawn it out on her her neck piece armor right I want to I'm gonna separate this just so I can keep them separated. So I'm going to split on mass points. I'm going to call this, let's start again. Let's start naming things so I can quickly look at this. And let's say upper leg. Armor, okie dokie. So now that I have this, in place okay I want to start building some things here okay so I want to use Z modeler right and because there's no thickness here the best thing that's going to be for me for Z modeler is extruding edges at a time okay so now I want to show you guys this technique so I'm hovering over an edge Okay, I can hover over a face or I hover over a point. So that's how Z modeler works. It's a hover state. So whatever point or whatever you're going to hover over, that's the actions you get. Okay, so it's either face, edge, or vertex. There's, there's nothing else. There's those three actions. So I'm going to hover over edge and then I'm going to click on extrude. Okay, so here's my defaults. Okay, and I'm going to turn on this. I'm going to turn on snap to surface. Okay, I'm going to do that for my edge, and then I'm going to hover over a point, click on the point. I'm going to switch to move, which by default you should have move selected if you're starting from scratch. And in here, there's a snap to surface. Okay, so now I've got a snap to surface there. And then this is a big one I would recommend for all of you. This is a big one. This is a Lisa Nate Braces moment. I would make the face do nothing. So I'll hover over a face and switch it to do nothing. I'm doing that because I, the face stuff is either going to do things like it's going to add volume or it's going to split the faces or crease the faces. Right now, I don't want to be doing anything. The only thing I want to be playing with are edges and vertex points. That's it. That's all I want to be playing with. Okay. And now what's happened here is this plane I can now, if I click on this point, right, and these edges, I can start snapping to the surface, right? So this is an edge. And see, this is actually connecting to her, right? And if I'm hovering over a point, this is now moving and connecting to her actual leg. So you see how I'm moving this? Right? Here's the problem now is this is a plane and her body's curved, right? She's got a curvature in the thigh, obviously. So I need to be able to see what I'm making right now. I love it. Lisa, go to your room. I love it. So there's two ways to do this. I have a preferred way. I'm going to show you both ways so you guys can rock and roll and do whatever you want with both ways. So the first one would be transparency. Okay. Not with ghost on. Turn ghost off. And now you can clearly see your plane. And then even though I'm doing this and I'm extruding my edges and then I can move them where I want, right? I can clearly see what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to start making like an arm armature that maybe starts falling a little bit of her leg, just a touch, right? Something, oops, something like this. And I want it to maybe start moving its way up, right? So now I can start doing this and I want it to start moving up. And up right and you can see it's just following the leg 
is all that's happening right now. Okay, now, the way that I prefer doing this, and this is going to be great for us, especially for what I'm making right now, which is like armor. Okay, I'm going to turn off transparency. Okay, and I'm going to go back into the geometry here. And if you remember, we got dynamic subdiv. I'm going to turn that on. And obviously what this is going to do, if I solo out, it's smoothing the surface. It's giving me that look. Right? So everything is moving. So there's no thickness here. It's just a thin plane of topology following the curvature of her leg. Okay? So what I want to do now is being able to tell ZBrush, you know what? How about this is the benefit to why I like this mode. So I'm not only going to look at the smoothing, but I'm now going to bump some thickness into this. And I can literally see what that surface is going to look like. And then, like I said, in our case, we're building armor, right? And then there's to boot, there's an offset slider. So I can offset all the way to 100, right? So this is at zero, it's 50 50. So 50% 50 of the surface that's now creating a thickness is inside her body. And 50% of it's outside the body. Since this is armor, I need to sit on her. Okay? And then remember, in 3D printing, I'm probably, I would actually want some overlapping. I'm going to put it at 100. And then now this is sitting right on her surface. And it's sitting there. And then now I'm going to say, okay, I don't need it that thick. Like, just thick enough so I can see what now... If you look at this, everybody, right? I can all day and say, okay, now I'm going to extrude this edge. All right? And then I'm going to extrude this edge. And then everything now is welded. Right? So if you don't want to look at the smooth version, you just turn down this. And now you're just straight up looking at the, the low, 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 low polygon version. I'm going to go with the bigger brush size just so I can move my points a little bit. Like this, right? And now if I just grab an edge, there, that welded. And now I'm just continuing this process of making something low polygon. And I'm going to say something like that. Okay, so I want something that curves up like this. And then I want it to come down her body. Okay, so here's something that you guys can do since someone just, someone asked, right? Someone asked, I want to make all those equal distant apart from each other. Okay. Worst Gamer 93, what part did you lose? Okay, the plane snapping to the surface, since also somebody else is asking. If you remember, I set up my brush to snap to the surface. Okay, so what I mean by that is in Z Modeler, when I'm hovering over an edge and holding the space bar, I turned on snap to surface. Okay, and then when I'm hovering over a point, I also have snap to surface turned on. That's how I'm snapping. That's it. That's all you got to do. Nothing else. Okay? Dunsky. Okay? Now, someone was asking about equal distant. You 100% can do that. Right? So, not only that, people, instead of drawing out one edge at a time, how about I draw a whole loop out? Right? So, I can draw out a whole edge loop. Not only that, I can draw out a whole pan of poly looping. So I'm going around the whole entire thing. Obviously, I don't want that. I'm just looking for, you know, do I want an edge loop or a single edge? So I'm doing this by tapping the Alt key. So really what I'm doing is I'm switching between edge, edge loop, and poly loop. That's what I'm switching between these buttons without actually going into the menu. Right? So again, when you're drawing out a single edge, tapping once will now do an edge loop. Edge loop is going to be this surface, this surface, this, this edge, these edges right here. So the, the six edges right here. It doesn't continue around and do these edges and then these edges along the top, right? So what does that is a poly loop. And you see now I'm already got edge loop selected. So if I, again, I click and now if I hold the alt key, we do a poly loop. So see, it's going around the whole surface, right? So that's what that does. But you guys also... Can keep in mind um, when you're doing stuff through this there's other ways to go about you know quickly working right so then the next question that came through obviously you guys were asking is we'll go back to just a single edge you want equal distant okay and right here see there's single row 
number of rows, and then row size. So if you want five rows, you just hold the space bar and tap on that. Now that slider is highlighted. And then now when I go, you see I get five rows. And then the benefit to this, I can get it right on any one of these. Okay. So this is also going to allow me to start doing things like that. Right. So you can have those rows and then I can say, and watch this, I can change it on the fly as well. Okay. So not only say I, I don't need five, I just need yet yeah, two, or maybe I want a couple more. Right. So when you guys are rolling on this, you can change this on the fly. So this slider goes from two to 25, right? So by default, it's on five. So it's drawing five, but I can change it on the fly as well right here, right? So I'm moving my hand left to right right now, right? So when I do this, I'm moving my hand left to right, okay? And then the other thing that I'm doing is holding the control key. So when you guys have that slider selected, that would be beneficial. So this I can at least maybe do two at a time. And then if you notice, okay, it's also wrapping to the surface, right? So if I'm doing, I do more. Because I have the snapping ability on, see it's following the leg as well. Okay, so that's a way to go. So it's it's up to you which way you want to go. If you want to do one at a time, and then you can really, like, you know, it's, it's, I'm particular sometimes because the angle that's happening in here, I don't like what's happening here. So I want to adjust some things. And then everything's going to snap. So that's snapping. And I want the leg to come like this. And that's good. And then I can go this way if I want to, and then go this way. And I want maybe that to start happening up her thigh, right? And I don't like what's happening here, maybe. And it's, again, people, this is a personal preference, right? Once we start getting into this is what way do you want to work, right? And then I can even switch to slide, complete edge loop, and I can slide these even if I want to and start having those slide a little bit. And like that is enough topology, right? To get kind of an armor piece. And then now maybe I throw on the dividing so I can see what is that going to really start looking like on her. Right? Really easy. And then switch to move brush. Maybe now just because I'm thin plane. Remember, this is just a thin plane right now. Right? That's, that's what we have here is a thin plane. That's it. Okay? And maybe I want to start having some armor that does this. So you can see... His is coming all the way down to like around the knee, right? So maybe, maybe I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to turn it back off and I'm going to see what does that look like? So I'm going to go back to Z modeler and I'm going to need to say, all right, I want to go back to my extrude and let's see if I bring it down all the way to the knee and then start kind of wrapping around the knee a little bit. So it's going to, and again, because I have snapping ability on, right? It's attaching to her surface right now, her her thigh in essence, right? Here, I'll turn on polyframe so you guys can see the adjustments that I'm making here. Okay, and all right, mm, yeah, let's go this way. It starts to wrap here and I don't want it to wrap like that. So I'm gonna start going back up the thigh now. And I'm looking more for something that does a little bit more like that up the thigh. Okay, and then maybe I change my mind. And I want to start doing something maybe comes around also. It's going to come around the corner a little bit. And again, here is I'm making some easy, quick adjustments. Uh, and then I'm going to come here. Tap the Alt key because I'm going to do the whole thing. I want that whole thing to come out. And then just so I have something like that, like there. Now I've got something that's wrapping around her leg that would protect that part of her leg, right? And then again, look it at it smooth. And then this is what I have, right? Um, 
the topology that I'm making though, like this, especially this face right here, this is, this would be a no. I, I probably wouldn't do anything like that, right? <clears throat> a face and delete that face and reassess this, right? And maybe delete that. Maybe it'd be better to insert an edge loop through here, right? So then that's there. And now look at this coming this way instead and even deleting those. So you can see why I turn off the actual face command, right? I turn it off because I don't want to do that. I don't want to accidentally delete something. So I'm going to turn it back to doing nothing and then going back to extrude and continue working on this, right? So do this, do that, right? And this topology wrap a little bit different now around her leg. And then now I need topology that's doing that to support that. So we'll come like this. Let's go up around the knee a little bit more. And the benefit again is we are working on snapped pieces, right? So I know every time I'm moving, I am still on the surface. This is the difference between now using the Z mother, right? The Z mother, the question was asked, can I move the points? And the answer was no. This technique, move the points. So this is why I'm kind of also showing different ways. Honestly, I probably would have also started this off, this piece that I'm making, not with like a single, with like a quick Z topology brush. Honestly, is how I probably would have started that off. I need to make sure there's movement in her, in her legs. Okay. And here, uh, I'm going to go parallel sides this time. And then I'm going to tap the alt key. So I get something like that. Just giving a, I want a ridge in here. And then I'm going to make one also on this side. Just a little bit of a ridge. Right? And then smoothing it out. This is what we get. Okay? So you can look at the smooth, the non-smooth. And up here, I... Actually, there you go. I messed up. I ate, I made another edge. So again, I'm going to click in here. And then see, this is seeing the other leg. Might be cool to do something. Let's see what that looks like smooth. Maybe do something where there starts to be a little, yep, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see, I like what's happening in here now better. So don't keep it consistent, right? So going back to, I think it needs, yeah, I think it needs a little bit more. So let's put this smooth back on. Let's grab that edge. Yeah, something more like that. And even let's do it now on this side. And this could be somewhere where I can use this to my benefit. It's just, of this is where maybe something's going to clip into it so it can come around and I can make a metal piece right here to protect the back of her leg, right? So again, I'm just, I want flow and I'm thinking about all this that I'm putting these points, these pointy ideas in and continuous. So I'm trying to get this idea now in here and at any time, because I'm super low polygon, I can just even switch to the move brush and get her and even start pulling this off her leg and get me something like that. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we are using Z Modeler, right, with the dynamic subdiv. So right now I've got thickness. So there's two ways to look at the thickness, okay? And there's a post subdiv and then there's a non-post sub. So I turn off non-post sub div. You can see it gets soft. So this is something more that's a little bit more starting to look more like a cloth than hard surface, right? So what I probably would want was the post sub div. So the difference between the two is we're looking at this slider you're smoothing. And right now I'm telling it four divisions, okay? So what happens is the thickness gets created after the four subdivisions. So obviously there's more density there. So that's why it's staying really crisp. 
if you turn off the post sub div, okay, that's going to now create the thickness, then do the four subdivisions. So that's why it's getting soft, okay? And there you go. That That's the way you would go about it. And masking off the other leg isn't going to do anything. Uh, it's not, this isn't a sculpting brush. You're building new surface, right? And it's in a whole nother sub tool. Like the leg's not even in the sub tool that I'm building, right? So masking off the leg won't do anything, right? Because this is, this is a completely different sub tool in here, right? And now I got something like this. You know, let's keep going with some tricks here. Let's keep going at this. Is it a way to remesh a hard surface with, with a very low polygon, keep sharp edges without breaking sharp edges? Yeah, this is the way you would do it. This isn't going to break sharp edges. What I'm doing now would be the one way that you could do it to answer your question, Sina. All right. Here's a little trick that sometimes I find useful, especially if I'm doing some hard surface elements like I'm doing right now with her. And I can't help myself. The ADD, I guess, is kicking in. Mm, I'm just looking at... I guess uh, that me. I'm thinking about maybe no, because I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna make something for her knee. I'm gonna make something that comes up here. Maybe I'll make even some crazy spike thing like this in in that bottom part of her armor. That I, I might double this up too. Might take this and put it in there as well. Okay, and I like this kind of stuff in there, and you can see it's also happening on this guy over here. So that's where I'm going with this, some of this stuff. All right, so here's a cool little trick for you guys where you can have multiple symmetry. In essence, you can have symmetry on only the left leg, but then you can have symmetry on the left and right leg, okay? So here's something that sometimes I will do, and it's just simply a couple of clicks and you're in business, all right? Okay. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn on a ray mesh. And I'm going to turn on these four buttons right here as well. Because I want to lock the size and the positioning. And I want to have relevance to those. All right? <clears throat> and I'm going to turn on the transpose option. Because what that does is when I turn on transpose, it actually turns the transpose tool into the GUI for a ray mesh. What I mean is this is now the driving force for a ray mesh. So if I'm in move mode, like right here, I can now move the copied version, right, along a path. I can come here and say, how many do I want to repeat, right? So I can do some of this. I can switch to scale and scale everything up and down, up and down, right? Right, and then scale maybe different, different ways, right? So you can see what's happening in here. Then I can even switch to something like rotate, and I can even rotate this one any direction that I want, right? This is the same thing, okay, as me going over here and saying offset a certain amount, switching to scale and saying, all right, let's 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 scale this direction, let's scale out a little bit in the Z maybe, right? So see it gets wider, right? That's what these are right here. That's all this is. Right? I'm just using the GUI of the transpose line in essence to do this. Okay? And then obviously you're rotating here, right? I can rotate along. You can see that's the same thing as me just staying with the transpose. Okay? So I'm gonna put this all back to zero. But what this also does for me is it shows me where my pivot point is. Okay, that yellow circle in the middle there, that's my pivot point, which is these controls. So what I want to do is I want to reset my pivot point. So I'm gonna click reset, right? And you can see the pivot point now just moved to the center of the world. So this mesh isn't sitting at the center of the world, it's off center. So what I told the array mesh is, no, 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 no. Let's reset. And this is why it's important to lock position to lock size, especially lock position on. I wanna lock where this thing's sitting in space. I wanna lock that position down, okay? Because if I did that same thing, right? And I don't have stuff like this on, and I, I start doing these resets, okay? And I start resetting things, you see nothing happens because the position's not locked. So I wanna lock that position and reset. So in essence, lock down that thigh leg. And now all I gotta do is click one more thing 
Mirax and Bingo. I now have both sides of the armor for her leg. Right? There you go. Okay? And now I have this to give me the ability, okay, to go about this and work on this. So I've only got one side now. So whatever happens on one side, it's going to happen on another side. And then this is when you guys start maybe having a little bit more fun with what you're doing, right? So I'm going to maybe move this a little bit and say something like this. And then now let's say, okay, let's use this topology, right, to make another surface now. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, so now I've got two. So I got upper leg armor second portion. Okay. And then now I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, all right, I actually don't want, I don't want these anymore. So I'm going to delete these, 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 and these. I only want these right now. And then I'm going to switch to inset. All right. And I'm going to do an inset, but I don't want one polygon. I want not just one, right? I want all polygons or polygroup all. One of those, either one of those will work. And so I want this, because I want an inset happening along this ridge here. Follow me? Okay, so you see, this is equidistant. So which means is, this edge and this edge are equidistant. Those face, they're the same distance. Now you see there's a bunch of other pieces being made, right? Because the rule is you're telling the program, hey, keep this equidistant. Like, the edges that exist, when you're making the new versions of them, keep them equidistant. Well, in order to do that, it's got to create new topology, right? So see, it's creating new topology. So there's new quads there. There's new, right? There's a triangle right there, right? So what you can do is try limiting that by coming down here to the bottom and use a snapping ability. So I can turn this snapping up. I'll just turn it up all the way and let's see there. Boom. So I'm still keeping nice equidistant, right? And then there's a couple in here being made. Okay, so this is important to understand now what I'm getting here, okay? The reason is, is that this has to be made in order to keep what's happening here in this sharp change here. It can't, like if I go low enough, it might start blind combining them. It can't keep this equidistant without creating this topology. Now, if you don't want to create topology, you could switch, there's two equidistance people. So this is a unique equidistant that we made, right? That's very specific. And this equidistance, the best way I can play it is, it's making sure every rule is being applied, but there's no real silhouette change. If you go to the standard equidistance, this is what you might find in many other applications. Yeah, you're gonna need equidistance, you won't make a new topology. But if you look, this point is being pushed in on the surface, right? So it is changing, like especially right there. Look how much, see that dip that's happening right there? See the dip right there? Everyone see that dip? So when you smooth that, that dip's gonna exist. It's gonna be there, right? Compared to if we can say, all right, let's undo that. And we don't, whoops, we don't want, let's go, uh, let's get rid of this again. Okay, so I don't, I wanna limit that dip. So this is where this equidistant might help. You see, there's no change now. See, this is staying consistent now. And so when you do this, see there's no real big dip in there. Okay, that's the difference between the two. Okay, so this is important to understand between the two. I'm gonna stick with this one, because really all I'm trying to do is make a surface like this. And then I'm just gonna keep only this. And let's go ahead and I'm going to now delete the hidden. I'm gonna get rid of that. And this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I don't need these faces here, right? So I'm gonna delete these, okay? And then now I can just say either I can extrude, right? And then just extrude across here, right? And start doing that. Or I could have also just used bridge and bridge from one edge to another edge. Same thing, nothing different, okay? 
The reason why I'm doing this, people, is I want to create a secondary piece of armor in here, right? And so now this goes back to turning on my dynamic, right? Gives me that on that one, and then turning my dynamic on this gives me that, right? And then now this is where I can be like, okay, uh, this is a little too much on this one. So I'm going to offset it back a little bit. Well, maybe more in that world, okay? And then now the bottom one, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit more thickness for me just to start giving a little bit more of that, right? Now I've got this double armor that's being built off the existing armor that I started with. Okay, and now I got, and then this, I wanted that because I'm gonna start doing different things here. Like this is a way to go about this. Okay. Yes, I've 100% animated in 3D before. Yes. Not the funnest thing I like. I don't like all the timing stuff. But yes, I have. Right? Again, I'm just trying to give you guys a breadth of things that we can do to be start building this out. Like, it's a little ridiculous what I have right now, I would say. I Like, I don't need this to go like that. That's crazy. And then this one, I probably would even go a little bit less on this one too like that's probably in the better you think about it right if something's too thick it's going to be heavy on her right it's going to be really heavy for her to do that all right so there we go there's that so let's continue up i need something for her waist um i can see right here they're doing stuff some stuff like in this there's a nice piece there and then there's a piece that's connecting he's kind of doing the same thing this is just leather. I can't see his. Can't see his. <clears throat> his is just coming all the way down to the waist. And then there's nothing really there, right? So I need probably something to protect the waist, right? So there you go. Uh, quick question. Uh, quick one, Paul. I've been binge watching your mech sound wave, okay? Over the last two weeks, instead of uh, instead of S4 of the Expanse. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'll be going back to Soundwave. Yes. A hundred percent. I will be going back to the Soundwave. That's somewhere else. I'm on my own personal channel, my own personal projects that I'm just, as an artist, I just want to do some artwork too. I'm, make, I'm making an 80s version of Soundwave. <clears throat> yes, I will go back. All right, so the thing everyone to keep in mind here is <clears throat> we have these pieces. So what you might want to do now is there might be a point here like, okay, I need to come out of this mode where it's just, really, this is just a thin mesh and I'm looking at dynamic subdiv. So what I'm actually going to do is, okay, I like this. I'm going to turn off the smooth. So then all I have are the thickness. And then I'm going to say apply. And so that's now real topology. And then the same thing for this one, turn off the smooth so it's not smooth. I don't want the smooth because when I hit apply, I don't want to divide it up version and it apply right and what this now opens up is stuff that we've already been talking about <clears throat> which is now now i can say well i also want to crease that crease that because this geometry didn't exist previously because i was just creasing i was just looking at right smooth and then now i'm going to say turn off the thickness and turn the smoothing back on right and then now i get pieces that look like this and i definitely want to crease like that and say okay that's what i want this piece to start looking like and once again i'm knocking this down because i want to smooth out some of those corners right i might i think three might be the better one for this one i'm going th with three on this one okay so then there there's that one and now i need to do the same thing for this one right if i turn on dynamic it had thickness so it's applying thickness again Right, and then zero, and now I'm gonna say I need it smooth, okay? And then now I'm going to just start creasing this up. Boom, right, and I want some creasing there and there, and I definitely want that and that and that, and then let's see what that's looking like. Need to crease along the poly grouping. Oh, I definitely want this edge up here creased. I want that nice high point. 
I want that high, nice point right there. And do I want to go this route? Uh, I think I'm going to go that route more per se. And there, I got this creased up. And then now again, drop it down to start smoothing this out a little bit. Right? And then there, now I have this happening. Right? And then now the benefit is I'm looking at the smooth version. I'm still staying pretty low. Okay? And that's off and run. I'm not going to be putting a lot of clothes on her. I'm only going to probably put like a side cloth thing maybe on her. Like maybe some that drapes down the middle. And then when she stands forward, it would show off her leg. Um, I'm not ready for dynamics at this time. Sorry, Yetkin. I don't even have all the armor done. I need to make my armor first before I get into anything like cloth. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, I got to continue making armor. So now it's just a combination of what do I want to make now for her. So I definitely need something along here. Right, so I need to start now just I need to start kicking out some armor so I can move on to the next stage of this process and maybe start moving into other features for you guys as well. So I'm gonna have an armor coming across. I'm just gonna do something that at least maps out kind of where I'd want things to go. So I'm gonna say come across here, and then the armor would say come through here. And I'm going to do it as like a belt more than anything coming across. And I need to see what that is. In essence, I'm just make her underwear, right? <clears throat> and then obviously this would continue on, but I don't want that. So this is an easy way for me to start getting some armor pieces that I would want here. And now I just want to, do I want to add anything into this? You know, just to start breaking up the armor so it doesn't have the same thing everywhere. Right? This kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to keep, I like maybe this, what's happening in there. Just repeating this kind of theme going up. Um, the back, I'm not going to put anything here because that would hurt. <laughs> that would not be comfortable. Okay. And then now I'll sole this out. And now I'll look at this and start maybe masking. Let's sharpen it a little bit. And in this case, let's use this. So we get this piece. Okay. So I got something like that. But I'm going to do a little bit extra. I'm going to mask off. Okay, I'm going to mask off by a certain way. So I'm going to tell it the mask by polygrouping. Okay, and so what happens anywhere where there's a polygroup on her, that gets a mask. So see that got a mask. So I'm going to inverse it. I don't want that piece. I can just mask that off anymore. And now I got something like this. And so the benefit to this is I can come here now to my deformations and I can polish by groups. And that'll start getting a little bit cleaner and I can go stronger and see it's getting cleaner. So I'm going to blur this a couple times just so I can polish with the red and the blue because I just want to make a cleaner surface like that. I want that. That's a little bit more something like that is what I'm looking for. Okay, and then I'm going to look at this. I'll come back to your question about the pinching. There's not really much you can do about that because uh, it's, it's the topology and then I'm telling it to crease a certain way, right? So there's not too much. I'll come back to it so everyone sees what you're talking about. Um, PXI, so you know. All right, and this time I'm gonna use, instead of this, I'm gonna use panel loops. I'm gonna say zero loops, panel loop that out. Now I got that, okay? And I'm going to, see I've got a pend on. That way I can split this off now. And I'm going to say split on mass points or mass points. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And then this, I'm going to start now cleaning this up a little bit. 
So this is where, again, the deformations and then the groups, I can start cleaning that up more and more and more, right? Um, but this is, again, something that I can mess with and say right from the get-go, I'm going to also, I don't like how this shape anymore. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to use my handy dandy slice curve. And I say, okay, I want the angle to be more like that from there. Okay. I don't, I don't need to save. All right. So it's doing that. And then from this angle, I'm going to come across like this, tapping the Alt key. And if I double tap Alt key, I get a harsh. I'm going to do that. See, and you know, I want to make sure I don't get anything else in there. Okay, and now I want to look at just this. And let me keep that part. So I got this now. Okay, so I'm going to now delete what I got. Okay, and then down here now, <clears throat> let's play with this. Let's do a circle slice. And let's make it be a little bit more pronounced. So we get that. Delete hidden, mirror and weld. And now I want another slice. Let's make that a little more pronounced. Again, this is just me having a design in my mind of where I want to go with this. And then just look at that. Delete hidden, mirror and weld. And then now that is, you know what? And I think I'm going to cut off from there. I'm going to go that route. And then I'm going to say delete hidden. So now this is what I have, right? As my mesh, right? And then that's something that I can start using to connect with, okay? Yeah, I'm going to be showing the whole process. I'm not showing it in this one stream. I don't have the character done, but, and you don't need to dynamesh everything together. You don't need to do that. That's a misnome. You don't have to do that. There is other techniques besides just dynameshing. And I don't use the dynamesh way of doing it personally. Um, because then you're sitting there guessing your resolution. You're trying to maintain the sculpted detail. Okay. And I will be posing her later. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not sending this to Scott uh, at Miniac without her posed. Okay. All right. So going back to the, the pinching was coming up. Just let me get to that before I can start continuing on with what I'm doing here with the armor. Because I'm going to put some, I'm putting some cloth in here. I might, I might redo the thighs. I think I'm going to bring them all the way up. And then I have some cloth that's going to connect into this is what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I don't, now that I got this, I'm not liking the thighs. I'm going to definitely probably change that. Okay. So, but someone was bringing up. Specifically, I know where they were bringing up in here. They are bringing up this part, right, right in here, right? There's a little pinching dip. There's really not much you can do about that, okay? It's because it's the topology controlling that, right? This is the downfall now of maybe going low polygon, okay? In the sense that this is creased, this is creased, and this is creased. But that edge is not, and that edge is not, right? There's no crease happening there, right? So your problem is these edges aren't moving as much as these two. So that's why you get, oops, you get a little bit of a dip pinch in there. Here, let, let's go to a different material. Does everyone see what that person was bringing up in this area right here, right? <clears throat> that's what's happening. That's what's happening. I, there's not really much I can do about that because it's all about topology, right? Even if I was to even start adding more, even if I deleted this one, you can see the pinch will even get a little bit, it'll get worse, right? It's because now there's even less topology in a way, right? So if we look at our creasing, bringing it down, see, it's still there, okay? And then if I add now an edge loop, See, the closer I get this edge to this, the worse this is going to get. 
right? See how bad that's getting? So what might be beneficial for you, this is why, this is the only one thing with going and going a little polygon, okay? You could smooth it a bit later on. Smoothing it now is not going to do anything because look how low the topology is. Doing this is just going to ruin the silhouette. So it's just going to do that. You can't smooth that. Later on, yeah, down the line, now that this, right, and if I apply this, this is now 24,000 polygons. So now I could smooth it. See, that'll start smoothing it out. So if I divide it up some more, right, and once I start getting into the world of ZBrush, see, I can start doing this to get rid of that pinching, right? But it's still going to somewhat be there. So you might want to do, when, you, when you're getting into places like this, Okay, it might be more beneficial for you to stay and do this. Sometimes I'll do this. I'll add an edge loop there, and then I'll add another edge loop, let's say there. And then right here, right, I will tell ZBrush to Q mesh this and add an actual, right, this transition might be better, right, through here. Right, and then now this edge, this needs to meet up because now there's quads through here and it's not meeting in the same way. So you can start getting that. And right now I've got creasing on the on this part. And so if I got rid of this creasing here, right, and if I kept going up the leg, right, that'll start, see, getting rid of that pinch a little bit better. So there's that. There's there is ways to go about it doing that. Could be one way. Okay? But the other way would be is don't do any creasing at all. Right? Uncrease this edge now. Right? And then now you'll have that nice transition and uncrease that edge and you'll have that nice transition happening, right? And if you want that to get a little bit more sharper, then it's about edge loops. Then just insert an edge loop now. Right, and then then it'll get a little bit more sharp for you, right? And you won't have that pinching as much. And then this is just a, a plane shift, right? These are all going completely another direction, right? If I wanted to continue the theme of this moving out like this, this these faces here, right here, right? These would need to be moved off the surface a little bit, right? They need to they need to follow that turning theme out so that when I look at this, right, I want that look, right? So they need to follow, in essence, the silhouette, right, that I've already started from the one angle, right? And then now I could say I could move this. And again, I'm hitting control H to hide the mask so I can see what I'm doing. Right now I have this. And then now I've cleared the mask and now you insert an edge loop and then you'll start getting the sharper pieces again, right? It's another way to go about it. So it's just a decision, but like I said, okay, I would probably, I'm going to redo these legs. I don't, I don't like, I don't like how this is looking. I'm not a fan of where this is going right now. Don't like it. Okay, so I'm going to delete these thigh things because I'm not a fan of these. I don't like it. I don't like them. Goodbye. Okay, so let's go more with, I'm going to think of this in a different context now. Right, so let's start designing up the legs here. Okay, so to give myself a lot quicker workflow, I'm going to turn this on. I don't need to see the line right now. I just need to see the polygrouping. All right, and I'm going to delete half her body. So I'm going to duplicate her because I'm going to delete half her body right now because I don't need the other half. It's going to get in my way right now. So I want to look at just one half of the body. And let's start making something that'll look cooler. So again, the fastest way for me to do this is just quickly mask out where I'd want the armor to take up her leg. So I definitely want, want it to support there. I wanted to come up and I'm going to make it come off the surface. I'm going to make this sh a sharp point up here. And 
I'm following the anatomy of her body a little bit here just so I can get what I want. Okay, so this wouldn't make any sense. I'd want that to be more like this. And again, you guys can see why sometimes I prefer this. And again, if you want a cleaner mask, right? In this case, if I want a cleaner mask, I could divide her up some more, right? And then now this is like 2 million, right? So this is way more dense. So my mask is going to get clean. Right? It's going to have a cleaner mask, and then I can sharpen that mask to this, right, to a point like that when I'm done. So let's keep it like this. So I wanted uh, I wanted something to come all the way down her leg, all the way up her leg, uh, something like that. And then I want it to come up like here, and then I wanted to come around, so... Uh, let's go here and come up through here. I don't need her arm. It's in the way right now. So come like this and then do this, right? Kind of a thing. And then now maybe I want to start refining it a little bit. A couple different ways. I could use the lasso to refine that shape. Hold the Alt key, right? I could use masking curve. And then this way I can really get a point and then also move that, hold the Alt key, and that will unmask, right? And then, okay, I like that, I like that. So there's multiple ways we can go here to get what I want. Oh, that, look at the silhouette. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. That looks like some kind of like image. It's like empty space. Love it. Uh, so I'm, oops, I don't want that one. I want just a regular pen. Okay, so I'm going to now use, I want to look at this whole thing as a unit right now. Okay, obviously her leg armor is not going to be one big unit like this because then we got a problem, right? Our problem is um, we, right, don't want that because then she wouldn't be able to move okay and I need her to move for sure I'm just looking at everything here um, I'm gonna come down I want it to come down and then in but I'm gonna keep this transition and I'm gonna bring this transition up more something more like along those lines there, happy little trees. Okay, and then I'm going to continue this up her leg, supporting the anatomy, of course, to protect, because obviously that's the point of the armor, too, is to protect her anatomy. And again, I don't need the arm, so let's hide the arm. It's in my way. Get out of my way! Darn arm, you're in my way. All right, and we'll go there. And then I'll do this to sharpen it up. Right? If you're using masking this like I'm masking pen, you wouldn't even have a smoother transition than use Lazy Mouse with it. Right? Right? Because Lazy Mouse, if I'm holding the control key and I turn on Lazy Mouse, I can, you know, get a different transition happening there. How do you thicken the edge of the vest? Yeah, I was just showing a bunch of things for that. So you'll see it when I come when I do this one. Okay. So this, okay, I'm liking that from that angle. I'm liking it from that angle. I'm liking it from that angle. I'm liking it from that. Okay. I now need to start breaking this up. So this kind of starts making sense um, for armor. Okay. So that's sharp enough. So let's even sharpen this. So I'm holding in control alt and I'm tapping on this to sharpen it, right? And that'll sharpen it. Okay. And this is now going to become the one piece of armor for her. Okay. For her legs. Okay. So I'm going to now 
control W and make that a new polygroup. And now the only thing I care about on this subtool is this piece. This is all I care about right now. That's it. Okay. And now we don't need the subdivision levels. Let's go ahead and turn her body back on. Right. I, I'm going to just so I can visually get a little bit better representation here. We can do this, but you know what? I'm first going to continue this. So there needs to be, I'm going to go with this kind of thought process over here like him, right? So can you, you guys here, I'm going to go with looking at this, this, right? I really like this layering effect that's happening. See, they've got some kind of skull thing on the knee, right? And you see it kind of ends up here in the thigh, but then continues going up. And see, there's even multiple surfaces right there, right? See that? That's kind of the thing I'm doing with her. I want like a piece of armor, but then there's actually another piece of armor underneath and another piece of armor underneath there, right? Okay? No, I'm not in Dynamesh. Nope. I'm not using Dynamesh at all. I can't use Dynamesh because it's a thin plane. I can't use Dynamesh for what I'm doing. So I'm looking at this. This kind of stuff is what I'm liking. This, right? I love the kneecap. I want that, right, to work with that. So I'm in a big resolution just because for your guys' sake. So let's put, since I'm using this as my reference, let's, let's do this. Let's reposition everything. So this is my biggest reference. So I just repositioned. I'm going to put that there and just make this be, because this is the part I'm at right now is the leg. Right? That's pretty much what I want to look at. So I want, I want to do something like what's going on in here. I like, see, like here, double layering. I love what's going on with the boot. Like, this is definitely my theme for her leg as well. Okay, so I've got this started. All right. And so now I want to get, okay, so it needs to make another polygroup in essence, right? So this is going to come across here, right? And you can't have this be one piece. If this is truly armor, it can't be one piece. So this is why I was kind of doing this kind of a thing. Because I want to create a piece in here that there's going to be some connections happening. So in essence, multiple pieces. So, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, let's start, let's start on masking. So I'm going to turn off the lazy mouse. Okay, so stroke, lazy mouse, I don't want that. And I want to start unmasking here because I'm going to need her knee to move. Right, I'm going to need some knee movement in here, just like they've got knee movement happening. Right, so looking from there. Okay, looking from there. Right, so do I want it to transition slowly or do I want a little bit more harsh transition there and then continue. In fact, we will make make sure it's going across all in the same spot. Okay, something like that. Okay, again, I can sharpen this and then control W. Okay, now what we have here is I'm getting grouped polygroups now, right? I'm getting pieces here. And so what I want to do now is start making more pieces to this, right? Um, and in fact, looking at this, right, I'm definitely going to need to address this in the back here in a second. So I need now, let's make a point on the knee. So I'm going to turn on my auto masking mask by polygroups. Right. And looking at this, you know, it kind of butts up into it. Do you, is this what I want? Do I want a knee joint that's doing this? Some kind. And then there's, I could even put some kind of sculptural detail on here. So the benefit of me doing what I did here, right, is that this poly, this masking now, is butting up right into the blue, right? And it's, when I control W, this pink is connected right into that blue. There's no gaps there, okay? Because there's something that we're going to be able to do down the road to even create some of those gaps and those 
stuff transition happening okay all right um i need i like this idea what this artist put in there right so it's it's going along my theme it comes up it's going to go out to support the calf muscle coming down right so i'm going to go that route because this calf actually i'd want it to probably come across there's going to be some kind of strap that's going through here so i'm going to show okay this is what i got now i'm going to show just this and do something like that right and then that's a poly group right and this is again you guys don't have to work this way this is just my preferred method of i like to work this way it, it just helps me design wise i can i can see the panels already happening in my eyes right and i actually want this part to transition in more like that and then the same thing on this side and because i have the feature on that i have on i know that's butting up into the pink and into the orange i'll make those and then now i'm going to say i want the orange and the new blue I want those to be a new polygroup, right? I want transitional part like that. Maybe it's gonna come in, right? And then now this blue part is what's starting to help me sell this thing. So let's stick with this, right? And then now I'm gonna start unmasking stuff. And I want, I'm going to turn this off now because this is getting in my way. And start just quickly blocking out once again what I'm looking for. I want some gap in here for sure. And I don't want this to sit as high. So I'm going to bring it down a lot more. Uh, let's go even lower actually let's go this low okay and then it's gonna come up now here and again do your transition that you want I need to come back here I need the leg to bend so it needs to not go too far back because I need bend in that leg right or else it's not going to work So this kind of stuff is easier to just quickly mask out the design and then see it from all the angles that I want to see it from. Again, there's many ways to go about doing this. And that's why I've been, as much as I can in the streams here, showing you guys the multiple ways to go at this. I want to look at this. It's going to be easier for me. Something like that. And then now I want it to transition through there. Transition up. Again, we're just tr I'm just trying to make a base mesh right now, really. Um, and it's not like I can't change this at any point in time as well too mm -hmm. sorry but you guys are now gonna have to just watch me be an artist because uh, I'm not sure where I want to go with this right now so I'm trying to figure it out I'm trying to make sure I get everything that I want to have happening okay I'm liking that okay and then now this piece okay can't be two pieces this blue one can't be two pieces right so let me turn back this back on and looking at this I need movement in here in the back so I would probably do something like this in fact let's just do a squared right like this and then something like that and I don't want it masked there 
And then now I can unmask up to the red. See this benefit? So I used the square, but I really only want it on the blue, right? So this doesn't, this isn't not, ignoring polygrouping in essence, right? So I did this so that I would get the shape that I kind of want to do for a cutout, maybe even bigger now, maybe something more like that. And then, but I can get rid of the, on the part that's the red that I just want to keep a, of its own red polygroup because I want that to have happening, right? So my armor pieces are going to be something like this, right? Then this, this piece, and then this piece. And so oh, I forgot to clear the mask on the front. Let me, before we do that, let me clear that mask on the front. Right, and then see, I can come up all the way and see I'm on the blue now, and I can refine that, control W, right? So again, the ports that are important, the parts of the ports that are important to me is this, this, and this, and see, you can see what I'm start making, and this, right? So this starts to become the armor look. Right, and so you can start, this would be a strap that's going around, right? So you can see I can either create the gaps like this with my masking, okay? Or I'm gonna make these, these two the same polygroup right now. So I got a little bit right in there. Okay, I'm gonna say this is one polygroup instead. And now, I've been making up these polygroups the way they are. What I'm going to do now is do something over here. All right. And I don't need, I don't need this anymore. Like I don't need this part. I only need this part of the topology, right? And I'm going to come into the edge loops again. And this time I'm going to hit group loops. And what ZBrush is going to do is give loops around the topology and start smoothing it. Right, so if we turn on the lines, you can see there's clean loops there. Right, so if I click on this purple, you see the loops are going around all the armor parts and then I can grow it again, grow it again, right? And see the geometry is actually clean, still clean there. Now it's not clean, right? And then this, right, is going to create the gaps that maybe I want to get in the armor. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? And now I've got eventually, and then now I would get rid of this, I would get rid of this, get rid of this, and then there's the bottom, and there's the top half of her armor starting to come together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of refinish this up. I don't like, I don't like what I did. So I'm not going to do the knee joint one because that's just another shape. I'm just going to worry about the green part and the blue part. That's all I care about. I just care about this part, the bottom part of the armor, and then the top thigh part of the armor. Okay? That's all I care about is those two. And I'm going to turn off the lines because he's so she's so dense right now. Uh, let's let's get a different color that you guys there can visually see everything. Okay, so obviously looking at this, right, the armor doesn't come all the way around like this. Like it doesn't go all the way around the calf like this. There's going to be a point where there's some kind of straps here that have to be used to kind of have this connect to her, right? So I'm going to go that route. So I'm going to say looking at this, I don't want any of this in this part of the armor. So I'm going to say I want it to transition. I'm going to say I want it to transition like this up her leg. And do something like that. And that angle. And then from this angle. Oh yeah. Steady hands. Oh yeah. I might have to, I might have to put on the glove. Hands sticking to the Cintiq. Right, and then now mask all this in. 
because this is going to become a completely separate piece uh, down the pipe. I'm probably going to do a special piece at the back of her calf and then have straps in the back that make so when she puts on the armor, it would make sense. Right? If you go look at some medieval references, medieval like armor from medieval times, you'll get where I'm going with this. Okay, that looks good. Control W. Okay, there's that, right? So then there, this is the front part now. This is gonna be her front armor. And in fact, I think it's going too far back. Because it's gonna need to spread out anyways. It's going too far back in my I don't I don't like that either. I need to I need to go back. I need to go a little bit more. So I need to come forward even more. So just quickly block in kind of where I want to go with this. And then now I'll probably let's even go like let's really add a slope through here. Okay, something like that on that side. And then this side, same thing. Let's, it's going forward way too much. Whistle while you work. Right? And again, the benefit that I have here is that I have on that feature, right? That when I'm masking out, I know it's only going on this, what now, purple, right? And then I can unmask it and then just go at this the way I want it to start looking and guys we're building base meshes it just does you gotta let go too this doesn't necessarily need to be perfect because I'm gonna be reconstructing this probably with one of the features that I've already shown you guys whether rebuilding it a little bit because also this is taking in some of her anatomy that I don't want so now I really want like this piece, right? This piece and this piece is now the back part per se. And it looks like I gotta get, let's turn on display, double. And I don't want any of that in this view. There we go. And then there, I'm just gonna keep it so you guys are seeing where I'm going with these polygroups. I could probably use this as the back armor piece for sure. Um, okay, that's good. I like that. So front part, back part. Now here I need a, I got a front part. I got movement here in the knee. I need a back part now that also has movement, right? So looking at this now, right? This is going way too far back actually, right? Going way too far back. So I need to refine this piece now, right? So I need to bring this a lot further, a little bit more in line with what's happening on the bottom. Something a little bit more like that. There we go. And then control W. And then there, now, now here's the back thigh piece, right? And then here is the front thigh piece. And this is kind of what I'm shooting for and trying to get to, something like this. And I, I'm just looking at this now in the context of now being on her body. And what would that look like? Right, so it's pretty dense. So it's really dense, right? So I'm gonna f get rid of the dense part. Right, so let's get make it lower polygon. Okay, what and hey, how do you draw a single polygroup? How do you draw a single polygroup? How do you draw a mask on a single polygroup? Seth, so what I've been doing, I'm not sure. Right, it, where you you jumped in on in the stream? Okay, this right now, see, I can't mask. This is global, people. So even if I switch to a sculpting brush, see, I can only sculpt on the poly group that I click on first. It's a global setting that I have turned on. And so what I have turned on, Seth, is in the brush palette, okay, in auto masking, the very first slider is poly group, mask by poly group. So in essence, that's telling ZBrush, only look at the poly group 
that I've clicked on. That's it, nothing else. Don't look at anything else. It's the only thing I want you to look at. And so that's why I can do like single poly group masking and I know I'm not gonna touch anything else, okay? Does that answer your question for you? Does that help for you? All right, um, all right, let's start getting rid of some stuff here. We do not need this. We do not need her arm. Right, so I wanna start getting rid of this. I don't need her foot, definitely not needed. Let's delete that. And we don't need mostly everything up here. We don't need any of that. And then delete hidden. Okay, now what I have here is just a simple, simple shape, right? Made up of different things and I've got polygroups in here. Right, and you can see the polygroups that I've been using, they're not super clean even, right? See that? So this is why we are gonna use the deformation and I'm gonna use this polish feature because I want those to get clean. Like I wanna get nice clean results through here. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna go in increments of 10, right? And then I'm just gonna stay zoomed in here and then I'm gonna say repeat to active the active I'm gonna just keep repeating the active just until I get kind of where I'm trying to go there where I'm trying to go with this right so you can see that's all nice and clean now right I got clean this there I got clean there clean there right so you can see and then of course if you go a hundred percent with this open circle it's gonna get real clean like that we are in business now yeah right and in fact, now, now that I'm looking at this, I'm gonna get rid of, I don't like the red, I don't like how the red's coming together. This is good for me, that's good for me. Okay, the top's good for me. I don't, this is why I like this, yes. Let's look at this and I'm gonna cut this across. I'm gonna have this go lower, be something more like, sit like that, a lot lower. And then now these can be one polygon. Okay, I want something more like that. There we go, that looks better. I like that. Okay, and this is why I kind of kept most of the leg too. Okay. And I see Mitchell, someone's answering you about how to move the slice curve or anything like that. It's the space bar. So now I need to get lower polygons and hence this is what the point of Z remesher is, right? I don't have to use Z remesher. I could quickly use this now and just build surfaces from it actually. Right, I can use this as my guide with the topology brush. Obviously, the easier thing is gonna be for me is to use Z-Remesh and see what we get. So I'm going to, I'm gonna turn on keep groups. And because I'm dealing with a mesh that I've cleaned up, that's when you see this smooth group slider right here. That's pretty much telling ZBrush to smooth the surface before you go remesh. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that on. Let's see what I get. So I'm just gonna start with the defaults. All I'm gonna do is gonna turn on keep groups. Right, I don't need symmetry, and so I'm just gonna remesh this, and let's see what we get. All I'm looking for is to get a nice, clean result that I can reduce, okay, and get a little bit lower. Don't be shy, get a little lower. Right, and then this is gonna give me hopefully some nice clean topology. I don't know yet until I see, and this is the beauty of Z Remesher, I'm experimenting and trying. Right, uh, and then yes. So it gave me pretty much good enough for me. Right, so I'm getting new clean topology in the parts that I care about, which are all these parts. These are the only parts I care about. I don't care about anything else because this is gonna be her bottom armor in essence, right? Okay, and I'm gonna say, let's see about maybe, what if I go a little bit lower just for giggles? There, I can get even lower, right? I think that's pretty low. Like there's her armor now piece, right? I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm relatively happy with that, right? It's not bad. Okay, so let's say that's what I want, right? 
So now I delete. I don't need the other mesh anymore. Right? And then now this, I turn on the I turn on my dynamic. I've got smoothing on. Now I'll just throw some thickness on here. Start getting those armor pieces to what I want, right? So I got this starting to happen. Okay? And then now I can even say come down here. And I can tell Zebra since they're polygrouped off the way I want them. Alright? I'm gonna say unweld group borders. And boom, I get the armor pieces separately. Just like that. I'm getting this the way I want it to look. Okay? There you go. That's how I would start see making her armor for her leg now. So, yes, retro. I, when I remeshed it, right? So let me go backwards again. I don't need to save this. Okay? When I go backwards, let me keep going backwards. Okay? When I did this, right, I told ZBrush in this, in the Z remesher, to actually keep the keep groups. So what it's doing is using each polygroup as its own drawing for it. And I can even try, try it without this, right? And now maybe start at 2,000. Let me re remesh that out. Now let's see what I get. But people, this might be better for you to do some of the other ways that I showed this, right? If you want to get really low, 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 it's going to be better to use either the topology brush or it's going to be better for you to use the, uh, the um, Z modeler right I this is just another way but like this is gonna be good enough for me like I'm getting good enough topology for me to say okay this is this is good enough right I got pretty much what I want and it's it's not like I'm gonna be able to I can remesh stuff again too right so and now I got this right that's done I can even and then what I did next was I split it right so each one of these polygroups this is the back armor, front back armor here, here, and then these are the two front pieces for her leg. And I came down here in modify topology, and I told it unweld group borders. Right. So then this, 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 and this are actually they're no longer welded. Right. And I obviously want to delete the rest. So when this smooths, they separate. Okay. But also, if I now just remesh normal now, right. It's because they're separate, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna get, right? So I can even turn on a smooth version, right? And I can apply this. And this, if I send this now to the remesher, watch what happens now. I don't need to keep this. And I'm, I'm not using groups, I'm just telling it to remesh. And now it's just looking at each piece individually, right? And then get whatever I can get from that individual pieces right and then there's my individual pieces and sometimes you might get even better topology this way and then now I you know I can experiment and go let's go all the way as low as 500 and let's remesh so I'm remeshing the pieces now there and then now maybe this is where you guys want to live and then now maybe I start deleting edge loops and I get now I've got a really low version of this like really looking at this I don't need all these spans right in the back piece. I could probably delete every other at least right now. I don't need that many going there. And same thing this direction. I don't need this many spans to give me when it smooths. See, it's still gonna look smooth and nice. And then the benefit to this is I'm eliminating topology that probably isn't really necessary. And then maybe I would use something like Z Modeler to fix more of this. I'm gonna go every other this way now. And again, just low, low, low is always going to help, okay? I don't like what's happening in here, okay? Not a fan of this, so I'm going to delete those faces, and then now I'm going to get rid of that. And then now I'm going to, let's say, bridge two points and go from there to there. Wait, no, no I'm not gonna bridge, actually. I don't wanna bridge. I'm gonna stitch it. And we'll go end point and go there to there, and then there to there, and then there's that. 
right? There, and now looking at this smooth, look how low I am now, right? Super low, 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 right? And then now I'd come up here and now do the same thing to this. I'm probably gonna repair this. I'm gonna delete these faces, just get rid of them. Right, because I'm gonna say, all right, let's delete this and delete this. Um, let's add an edge loop in here. Insert an edge loop there. That way I can delete this, I can delete this. Right, and then now probably start cleaning this up. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? I'm using Zmodeler with the Z remesher to get me to a point where I can get low enough to really do some quick stuff and I, I don't need this many spans and in most cases I'm going to be able to, do, to get rid of most of these like there's no need for that many even that many I don't really even need that much so there's that and then this way I don't need as many this way so I can skip every other something like that and then now start cleaning up the rest uh, I can see what's happening here. This edge is supporting this edge. I don't. I don't like that. I prefer that. Um, maybe. And then now, I'll delete this, and I'll insert an edge loop in there, so that when this smooths, I start getting this. Right. So this piece is going to take a little bit more work. This is going to take a little more refining the front piece because there's just so much movement happening in there. Okay, but. This is what I'm going to start doing in the bottom of the legs. Okay, and of course in the back. And again, you can see, even if I delete these, I'm still getting the relative armor that I wanted, right? And then of course the benefit to this is go back to what we've been doing. We've got smooth. Now throw some thickness on there and I can start seeing how that armor is going to sit on her. And in what way? See, I, I need to fix this front piece. It's no, no good. Not a good piece. That front piece. I don't like it. There you go. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this. Um, so hopefully what I can do for the next stream is get the armor to the point where, okay, all the armor is made. And then we can start refining and adding the details. And then start putting in other things. So you guys aren't just seeing the third stream me also making armor. Um, I will not be streaming next Friday. I'm not available, unfortunately. So the following Friday, I'll be streaming. Uh, so again, date-wise, for the dates, um, what is today? Today's the, the 12th. So I will not be streaming on the 19th, but I will be streaming on the 26th. Same bat channel, same bat time. Okay? Okay? So that would be the way to go about that. And yeah, of course, you can email me. Okay. Right. So if you want, let me, let me just actually, I haven't saved her once yet. <laughs> so let me at least save this. Uh, and I like saving in iterations. So I'm going to save this number six. Okay. But before we go, is there any questions that I missed? Um, any questions that you guys have for me? So here is my address. There you go. It's really simple. Paul at pixelogic.com. How do you thicken the edge of the loop? Um, are you referring to, so if I look at this, are you referring this? How did I get this to be thicker? This part right here? I'm talking about all this in here? Is that what you're talking about? If so, it's over here. I'm using dynamic. So really, the minute I turn dynamic on, right, I'm having it smooth. But I'm turning on this thickness right here. This thickness is what thickens it. And then I can actually tell to be offset, which I probably would want to do for this, so it sits off her leg better. And then I'm adding thickness in here. Right? And that's what's creating that thick. Right? My goodie. That's what I'm trying to make here, some kind of base mesh. Right? And then I'll add things like this things like even what they're doing here. I'll probably keep refining this one more and more. Does that help? Um, sorry for the mispronunciation, but Ofori? Does that help? 
That's that's all I was doing. And then even you guys can even there's also a slider they can say you can add segments in the middle. So see it's adding segments there. So if I turn off post subdiv, see I could do this. I'm getting more probably the armor that I want. Like that's what I I'm, I want more closer to that. Right? And it's adding equal spans in the middle because I've upped the segments. Right? So less segments is going to round it. More segments is going to keep that more harsh. And I've turned off the post subdiv so it's not extremely hard. But then I can also still throw in some creasing. Right? And then drop that down. So now I've got creasing. I've got a whole bunch of things happening here. And look, there's. I definitely don't want this crease to happen. I don't want creasing there. But now I've got creasing also around the, all the edges. And I don't want creasing there. So I got something like this happening. See, just like that, you can create. Think about it, it's not even just armor, right? This could be a sci-fi. Right? And now I've got segments, creasing. I've got thickness. I've got offsetting. Like, it's our oyster, people. We can do whatever we want. All right, I'm gonna go down one there, get something like that. Ah, yeah. All right, then this is what I'm looking for for her. This is definitely gonna be the route I'm going. And again, I'm going with this theme too, where there's gonna be like kind of double armor. So you gotta be thinking about that. I'm gonna be doubling up this armor, so I want bigger gaps in there as well. Okay, the silhouette window is there is on is in ZBrush by default. This, this is a feature. This is there by default. So if you don't have this, that means you're not using the the current version. Uh, we introduced this in I want to say 2019. So this is now almost two years old. This is by default, um, and you can turn it off though. So maybe you turned it off. Thumbnail. And you can do non silhouette if you want to. I don't do that, but um, I like the silhouette. And you can even add an image. If you just click on it, you can put an image in the background. And then you can zoom up and be, you can magnify it, bring it down. Uh, yeah, I love this thing, man. I use this thing all the time. Start going down the body and see the silhouette that I'm making for her in each, and then go this route and see the silhouette I'm making for her this way. And then from the top, Right, see how that silhouette's looking, right? It's a nice, easy way of working, for sure. Okay. Uh, wait, so let me see. When you delete the edge, does ZBrush have a swift loop function? No. I don't know, I don't know what you mean by swift loop. Um, I'm not familiar with that terminology. So I don't know what you mean by swift loop. Um, and just remember in ZBrush, we don't do end gons in ZBrush. There's no end gons, so you can't ju you can't just delete this edge. I can't go edge and say delete, right? It'll delete the face too, because deleting that one edge would create an end gon, and you can't sculpt on an end gon, so we don't allow end gons. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're deleting stuff. It will do stuff like this. Okay, if you're gonna delete, trying to delete edges. This is why if you're trying to change the flow of topology, you do stuff like I go bridge and do that. Now that flow is different, right? And then now I gotta probably delete this, delete this, delete that. And then I would probably insert an edge here, insert an edge here. And then now I could bridge from here to here. And then now I got that loop happening, right? But now you gotta Oops, you gotta finish off the bridging, right? Probably go here to here, and now here to here, and now here to here. And now this needs to be slid. I, I stay away from triangles as much as I can personally as well. That's just a personal preference. Uh, I will use them, but I just, they don't divide sometimes the right. It'll create, like when you look at this, see it creates that, because it's a triangle. So this, I'd probably find a way to try and figure that out. Uh, the ever popular figuring out topology. Does that answer your question? The thick edging on the chest, this, this, this I did in the first stream. 
So this is part two of the stream. Um, so I just did this. This is just panel loops. That's all this is, is panel loops. That's all it is, is panel loops. In there. That's how I did that. Okay, so in essence, like if I grabbed her, if you don't know what panel loops are, you make a mask, control W, right? And if I come in here and make another mask, and just a really ugly mask, control W. If I now look at just these two pieces, you come down here in the edge loop, you have panel looping, right? I'm gonna turn off a pen. If I panel loop, see, it comes off the surface. And if I give this some loops, I would say go watch the first stream of this. And then that's how I did that. Okay. That answered that question. Uh, if you import something with UVs and Engons, how do you fix that? You can't import Engons. It won't. ZBrush will give you until you have Engons and it'll ask you, do you want to convert those to all triangles or do you want to do quads and triangles? And then, yeah, you're going to have to go fix your UVs. Yes, your UVs will be broke as well. You're going to need to go fix those. Just know that that's ZBrush. You can't bring in an Engon. So if you're going to import anything in, just make sure you don't have any Engons. Would be my suggestion for your workflow. Okay. Uh, let me see. Do you think of the images? I'm just seeing what other questions I missed. When using booleans, do you apply the booleans as you go and continue work on booleans on unit mesh, or do you make the final step? Oh, I don't apply my booleans, live booleans. I don't apply them until I actually need it. A hundred percent. I do not apply them until, all right, I need to either make something from that boolean process to use, or yeah, I need the result. Otherwise, I don't. I don't apply. I don't use. I don't apply my booleans until it's until it's needed. Okay. That makes sense. And, and this, I'm going again. So you guys get, I'm going with this for the bottom half. See, there's cloth here. I'll start adding stuff like that down the line here. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, let's see if I missed anything. Okay, I'm just going through the questions to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, um, John, John S. Bond, you have my email, correct? All right. Okay, so again... I stream on our Pixelogic channel every Friday. And no, my, this is casting a shadow now. Every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time till I go till 1. So I got to get out of here because I got other things I'm going to get into. Um, and then again, the goal of this streams coming up in these streams is building a Banshee vampire woman that has like armor on her. That eventually is going to be used as a miniature 3D printed. And then I'm working with Scott at Miniac. And I'm going to be send, printing it out. Going through that whole process. So everyone, you're going to see beginning to end process here. Building everything. Then posing it. Then prepping it for print. Printing it. And then Scott on his side and his channel. On his Miniac channel and his YouTube channel. Is going to do an episode of hand painting her. Okay. How would you keep sharp corners when polishing a 2D surface? Uh, are you are you meaning like more, you mean like a plane? Right, that's what you mean. Okay. You can manipulate cloth in real time. That's what our dynamics is. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to get into that. Unfortunately, right now because I got to get going. Um, but winter, wintry snowman. Uh, are you referring to like, um, here, so if I go back to this, when you say 2D, because this is not, a, we're not in 2D, right? This is a plane, right? 
So if you start to, if I turn off dynamic, you start to smooth, right? If I turn on this, you see all the corners aren't smoothing and everything else is. Yeah, that's not going to, by default, these aren't going to smooth right here. We're not going to allow it. You would have to turn something on to allow the, that corner to smooth. You would have to come over here into your brush. Okay, and at the very bottom, there's smooth modifiers. And right here, there's a minimum connect points. Right, so while you're holding shift key, you'd have to turn this down. And then see, see not only that doesn't smooth, but the rest are smoothing. Because there's two connecting edges here. So if I turn this down all the way to one, now everything's smoothable. So by default, you're not going to be able to smooth the corners. If that's what you're referring to, um, this by default is not going to let you. So something without thickness, it's by default, you're not going to be able to smooth. Right? And obviously, if you turn that slider up, you're going to get less smoothing to the point where you'll get no smooth if you turn it up too high. Okay? Uh, creating, is there a way to maintain roundness when polishing panels? Yeah, that comes down to the brush size. It depends on what you're using, Alex. At, are you talking about polish and things like that? Um, keep in mind, uh, you could polish it, right? And then use deformations down here to clean stuff up, right? That usually what I would recommend doing. So this polishing features, you're talking about these. So, well, by poly, this is just going to do it all, right? So if I do this, it's, see, they're all are, keep polishing and polishing and polishing and polishing, right? So if you don't want, if you don't want these to move, just mask them. And then when you polish, see, those don't move. So all this will appreciate masking, right? Um, or get smart with these. This one's for only, this will only polish things that are not, have a creasing. So see none of these, this is trying to get, not get polished. This one is all about polygroups and this one's all about both looking at polygroups and creasing, right? To me, to do that. But you can mask stuff off when you're using any, anything within here. Masking is going to be appreciated. Anytime I, how do I make it project, but instead of digging, uh, if you're talking about, I don't know what brush particular you're talking about. So if you're talking about something like the H polish, right? If that's what you're talking about, it's, it's meant to do that. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to dig in so you can, it's meant to, as you keep digging, it's just going to keep getting flat and flat and flat, right? So obviously if you hold the alt key, right, you get the opposite. It's going to pull out on the surface like this. Right? And to get a the smoother stroke, you might want to start using things like lazy mouse, add a radius, and then that way you can do this. And then that's nice and smooth. And then hit the one key to get a consistent. Right? So this is smoothing that out. And then the same thing here. If I'm holding the alt key out, right? I can keep tapping the one key. Right? And right now my intensity, if I went way higher with my intensity. Right, you'll get a different stroke. You'll get a little bit stronger. Right, and then what this is controlling also is in um, in samples right here. This preserve edge. This is what the polish and these two, all these down here is what they're using. So if you start cranking these up, you'll get a different H polish. But I, what I would recommend is using polygrouping. Like you got it, you got it. You guys got to use polygrouping to your benefit, right? Because if you want a crisp edge here and you want to just quickly get a crisp edge, polygrouping is going to be the fastest way to do that too. Just got to get smart with when you're sculpting with it, the polygrouping it off. And that's why we have other features like polygroup it inside of ZBrush. Okay, unfortunately, guys, I gotta go. I can't take any more questions. I gotta move on to my next thing. I got some other things going on today. Thank you, though, for uh, sticking around with me. I, hopefully, you guys took away a lot. Again, 
every Friday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right now doing our how to do a 3D print and miniature making and painting. Again, we're going to be doing my process, making everything inside of ZBrush, prepping for print, 3D printing it, sending it off to Scott and Miniac. And you guys are going to see on his channel how he paints this piece that I'm making. So I'm Paul Gabry with Pixelogic. I really appreciate you all for coming by, saying hello, watching the stream. Hopefully you're learning a lot. This was part two, so please go watch part one on this channel. So it's on our YouTube course, the Pixelogic, okay? So, so pressing one Mitchell is repeating the same stroke over and over again. That's all it's doing. It's got nothing to do with H polish. Okay, ugh, here, I'm gonna do this, okay? So watch, if I do clay buildup, See, one, one. It's just clay building up again. And it's got nothing to do with the brush. In the sense that, guys, I could do this, a clay build up, hit the one key, switch completely to a different different brush, like Damien Standard, hit the one key, and see, now I'm doing Damien Standard along the same stroke. That's all the one's doing, is replaying right here the last stroke. There's a lot. Replay last relative's important. Inventory is important. There's a lot more you can do. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Have a great day. Thank you. Again, here's my email. So please, you can just go ahead and email me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm going to start also putting this. So if you do this on ZBC, also if you make posts on ZBC with the at PixoPaul, I'll get an email that way as well. So there's two ways you guys can contact me. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, night, or morning, wherever you are in the world. Again, this is Paul Gay with Pixelogic, and I'm out!